Hey there, Griff Allen here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome, thanks for joining me. In today's video, I've obviously got my acoustic out because we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, jamming alone, meaning, you know, playing solo. And I don't mean like a guitar solo, but solo as in by yourself. That typically means acoustic blues. Uh, anyway, what we're gonna talk about is sort of jamming alone, building in some variations on your blues. Now, you may already know I have a course called How to Jam the Blues Alone on Your Guitar. I have videos about how to jam the blues alone. It's kind of a thing that I like to do. Um, I have a few different ways of doing this, but uh, and it's all about that sort of, that style of playing that I was doing on, on the way into the video. And what you gotta know is that I literally just make that stuff up as I'm going along. I, I, I don't read it. It's not like it's written down anywhere. Um, I don't sit down and learn that stuff as if it's some kind of a song. It's literally, I just sit down and start playing stuff. And a lot of my students like this style. Uh, the courses that I make, the lessons that I do in this style are extremely popular. And I get it, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, just grab a guitar and go. And you can, it's a really easy way to entertain yourself, your guests, your friends, your spouse, your dog, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It is, it's fun. But what I wanna do today is actually kind of combine something different that doesn't often get talked about with this idea. Usually we talk about licks and different fills and stuff that you can do. And and I'm going to give you some stuff today. There's, there's going to be a, the cool side benefit here is I'm definitely going to show you some licks and I'm going to give you a turnaround and maybe give you some, some extra insight into the style of playing. But also I want to bring in some stuff. I have another course called 52 Rhythm Fills and Variations. And I want to sort of make, you know, poke a little bit at the rhythm part of this and actually show you how you can not only like have cooler licks and add a whole bunch of cool licks and stuff, but to your groove, there's other stuff you can do to it. Okay. And it's, it's really neat when you start to mix all of this stuff from, I'll say both of those sources. So I'm going to do that today. But even if you don't have any of the courses or any of that stuff, I think you're gonna get a lot out of this video. And it will definitely help you down that path if, that's, if this is the style of playing that you wanna do. It'll at least give you some fun things to play from here on out. So we're gonna start with the basic, you know, blues in E pattern. Now I'm going to assume that you know the basic blues in E. The E and the 12 bar form and the B and the A. Okay, I'm gonna assume that you've got all that. If for some reason you don't, if that all is Greek and you've never done this before, I, we're, we're past you. you. You need to go back and, and work on that first. This is gonna be way over your head. I might as well tell you now, <laughs> okay? Let's not get too carried away. But assuming that you do know that you feel comfortable doing that basic blues in E, what we're gonna need first is we're gonna need a simple lick. And what the key is that this lick does not start on beat one. The reason we're gonna do that has to do with the call and response. We need the chord on beat one. So this lick needs to start just after beat one at some point, usually the second half of beat one or maybe beat two. There's tons of licks that do this and it needs to last just through the rest of that bar. So here's one of my favorites. One, two, three, four, I want. Okay, so this is a pretty cool little E minor pentatonic or E minor blues lick. Um, the E minor blues scale, open E, third fret, open one, two, open two, open two, the blue notes on three, open three, open three. You probably know that scale. If you don't, you do now, okay? So we're gonna start with the G, then the open E and the D and back to the E. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide from the A to the B. And this slides out of what you might call box one into what you might call box two. I don't wanna to get too hung up on that stuff today because I wanna get your fingers moving and get you playing something cool. So let's just kind of follow along. Then I'm gonna grab the D, the third fret. Notice that I do it with my first finger now. And then I'm gonna grab that open E and that's gonna give me time to get my middle finger back to the B and slide it back to the A. Now you could pull off to the G or pick the open G and then I've got that E at the end. So if I count this out nice and slowly, 
One and a two and a three and a four and a. Again. One and a two and a three and a four and a. Now, it's up to you. You might notice I use my fingers sometimes. You don't have to do that. One and a two, three and a four and a. You can just play it. One, a two. I kind of like right there. I like to get that. It just adds an interesting flavor to it. It's something I like to do. Obviously, you don't need to do that. So I don't want you to feel like you have to do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to take that basic 12 bar blues. Right, four bars of one, two bars of four, two bars of one, four, two bars, you know, the five, four, one, five, right? I, I'm not gonna go through it again, you get the idea. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go back and forth, okay? Music needs some rhythm and it needs some melody. And we're gonna have kind of basically call and response. We're gonna do both parts, okay? So we're gonna do one bar of groove, then we're gonna do that one bar lick. Then we're gonna do one bar of groove, then we're gonna do that one bar lick, okay? It's pretty cool. Uh, let me show you how this would go. So here's the lick again, in case you forget. So I've got my groove, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, and I'm gonna play beat one, and then the rest is gonna be my lick. A uh, two and a th three and a four and a. Then I'm gonna play my groove again. One, a uh, two, and then my lick. One, a uh, two and a three and a. Then the A, because that's the bar that we're on. Then the E. That's the whole thing. So now we've played the entire 12 bar blues. Now, you might be like, hey, Griff, that was a little fast. <laughs> I get it. But really, I haven't gotten to the cool stuff yet. So if you need to kind of maybe go back and sort of work that lick a few times to get it under your fingers, I get it. That's totally cool. And as you can tell, it already starts to sound kind of cool, right? It's, it's going to get a little bit repetitive very quickly. But again, we have one bar plus that beat one, then the lick. One bar, plus that beat one, then the lick. Now, you need, of course, as you could tell, I knew, was I on the E chord, was I on the A chord, was I on the B? I know my one, four, five. Again, if you don't know that basic 12 bar blues, the one, four, five, if you don't know when it's supposed to be one, you don't know when it's supposed to be four, you don't know when it's supposed to be five, you're gonna struggle with this, okay? So, if despite my warnings, you're still here and you're struggling with the 12 bar blues, that's gonna make this a challenge. So definitely take your time with that. But this will also help you help, you know, keep track of where you're supposed to be in the blues. Okay, so hopefully all of this kind of stuff can kind of work together for you. But what we're gonna do now is let's add a turnaround. Now, if you don't know what a turnaround is, it's the last couple of bars of the 12 bar form. And I have one that I like. This is kind of a classic, you know, Robert Johnson style turnaround. So I have the low E, the high E, and I'm gonna basically walk down the bass. So I'm gonna go from the fifth fret on the fifth string, and you'll notice that I'm hitting that note and the open E together at the same time. Then go down a fret, and down another fret, and finally down one more fret to the B and walk a little bass right there. Open first and second. So I'm ending on that B. And you could add like a little B7 chord there at the end if you want to. It's totally fine. So in time it's one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, or however you want to add that B7 at the end. A little bit quicker, three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. Now real quick, there's no such thing as full speed here, okay? You can play this as slow or as fast as you want. I could go. I 
can go as fast as I want for that turnaround. Or you can do very, very tempo dell'erno, right? One, a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a Right, you can go nice and slow. Keep your groove when it comes time for the turnaround. Right? It's greasy. It sounds cool. It's also slow, so you can play it. That's also a good thing. <laughs> okay, so, so far we have a groove, right? We're using our basic blues and E groove. We're gonna, that we're gonna mess with here in a minute. We've got our basic groove, we have a lick, and we have a turnaround. So between those three things, we can put together, I'll say the entire 12 bar form and not totally and completely repeat ourselves every single time. Check it out. Three, four, one. So, cool, not bad, not bad at all. It's starting to sound musical. Of course, like I said, you can go a lot slower than I, you can go a lot faster than I, it just doesn't matter. It's whatever speed you want, whatever is comfortable for you. Okay, so now, what you can probably hear though, is we've got, we've got the stuff that we've got, but it would be really nice to have just, at least just one more cool lick. Let's try this one. One. And I just really like the sound of this one. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't fit in the scale. But I really like the sound of it. It's, it's the G, and down here we've got a C sharp. It's the sixth of the scale. It's just kind of a weird thing, but I just always really like the sound of it. So one and a two and a three and a four and a. And I did open E, D, and open E at the end, but you don't have to, you could just keep banging away on the G and the C sharp if you want. One, a two, a three, a four, a. Or, for example, the very last beat, you could just let go. One, a two, a four, a. And then you get the, the two strings open. So there's like three different ways you could play this one lick. You know, there's probably like at least three different versions of this that would be really, 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 really easy to do just right away, okay? But what we can do now is we've got two licks, okay? So we've got a groove, we've got two licks, and we've got a turnaround. Now we can alternate. So every other time that we play a lick, we're gonna go between our two different options. We're either going to play our first option, or we're gonna play our second option. One. And of course, like I said, you can play whatever version of that you want. But let's put that all together with the turnaround. Let's check it out. One, two, three, four. Imagine, right, if you did some of those other little variations. If I... And if I could do even little subtle variations of those licks. And there's gobs and gobs and gobs of ways you can do that. Okay, so now we have a groove. We have a couple of licks. We have a turnaround. Arguably, we've got some, some music now, right? We are, we are making some music. 
But what we can do is we can also mess with that groove itself. And this is where, for those of you, if you're one of my All Access Pass subscribers or you have the 52 Rhythm and Fills, rhythm fills and Variations course, there is a whole bunch of, for example, slow blues variations, and they can look something like this. Two, three, four. Now, there's an interesting thing about the technique here. Obviously, it's not... Right, that's, that's pretty straightforward. So I have the two E's to start with, but then I have G natural and G sharp, and this is kind of a major blues sound. And then I go back to the open and second, and then I go to the open and fourth, and back to the open and second. So one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, but notice that you kind of hear you almost hear only one you hear that melody within all of this other stuff that goes on and that's kind of a cool little technique thing where I'm basically focusing my attention on either the lower notes so even though I'm hitting that too I'm really mostly hitting the open And here, I'm still hitting that open, even though I'm focusing primarily on the two and the four up there on the fifth string. So I'm, I'm consciously aware of the melody within all of those notes. And if you too are also very you know, conscious and aware of that melody and listen as you play, listen for that bass note thing to, to come out, if you listen for it and you're expecting it and you're hoping to hear it, after a while your technique will adapt to make that happen. But you have to be aware of it, you have to really listen for it. I also like a little bit of palm mute. And I can do, notice I can do up and down or all down. palm mute right anything like that is fine if I do it in a I just move everything up by a string right back to the E of course when I get to the B uh, I might not be so inclined to use multiple notes past the beginning so I'm gonna get the two and the four then five six notice I kind of switch my fingering on the fifth string and then I get the F4, the F sharp, and the G sharp. So I get... Right? Because it would be hard. I could do that, but moving that pinky around a lot, that's, that's kind of tough. I don't necessarily want to make this super hard on you. You could add that 4 on that string above it, but again, more challenging. So I've got a few different, you know, variations. Now, again, like I said, in course material, there's like 20 or more. There's tons and tons and tons of different things. And you don't have to even do the same thing twice. Like if you know six groove variations, you could do them all. Just kind of wherever you want. You can see this, this explodes really quick into just having so many different options which I realize can be a problem. You get sort of paralysis by analysis, but that's why we learn them one at a time. You learn one, you really get it down. If you really dig it and you, you, you love it and you use it, you'll remember it. If you don't love it and you don't use it, you won't remember it. And that's kind of how we separate the ones we like from the ones we don't. So now we have a groove variation, two different licks and a turnaround. Let's put it all together and see what it sounds like. Uh, one, two, Three, four.
of course, what's awesome about that is I can keep going. I can play it around again. I can change a couple of notes here and there. I can change a couple of notes in the groove here and there with any and all of the possible licks or grooves or anything that you might know. They all fit in there. And this, my friends, is how acoustic blues gets made, in my opinion. This is how stuff goes together. You learn the pieces, you put them together. You add one piece, you add that into the mix. You add one more piece, add it into the mix. Please don't try to learn 27 different pieces right off the bat. That's not the way to do it. Do them one at a time, put them into play. If you love them and they stick, great. Then you'll continue to use them and they'll become part of your vocabulary. But if you don't love them, you move on to the next one. No big deal. There's a lot of great options out there. Okay, so as always, I hope this video is useful to you. Uh, I'm going to leave a variety of links. Uh, I have uh, the All Access Pass, of course, which you can try for a dollar. I have uh, a bunch of different courses, over 50 of them now, uh, all about all aspects of blues and classic rock guitar, music theory, all that kind of stuff. There, uh, of course, if you are not on my email list, I encourage you to sign up for any of the free uh, lessons or, or downloads that I have that will put you on the email list. People on my email list, for example, will get the tab to this video as well as just the video itself. And of course, I do gobs of videos that don't show up on YouTube, Facebook, wherever. If you happen to be watching this on my blog, then you probably are in my on my email list and that's how you're seeing it. But I also do a bunch of stuff that never shows up on YouTube and never shows up on Facebook and never shows up anywhere else just for email subscribers. So I do hope you'll do that. And my name is Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.